Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church at Worship. Today is February 14th and it is the Sunday of the Transfiguration. Welcome to worship. cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. 
Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. And the water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked for a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grabbed his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus Christ as Lord, 
and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on the earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We crested the ridge on Highway 89, on the section that runs from the town of Browning, Montana to St. Mary in Glacier National Park. And there, the great expanse of the Rocky Mountains stretched out across the horizon. Before me rose peak and spire, stone face and snow capped. I felt my heart race and my breath quicken. Never had I seen anything as majestic and breathtaking in all my life. I wanted to pull the car over right then and there and then just take it all in, capture it in my memory. But of course, memories aren't always that trustworthy. I tried to articulate with my lips what my eyes were absorbing and the rush of energy that, that pulsed through my body. I took pictures and yet even the pictures couldn't do it justice. There was something about seeing it, but even more than seeing it, experiencing it. You know, I tried to tell folks back east about the splendor, its rugged beauty, but they just couldn't understand, they couldn't grasp it, couldn't fully comprehend the, the reality behind my words. And so with each person who, who came to visit during our five years in Big Sky Country, we would once again journey Highway 89, cresting that same ridge and let them experience it for themselves. And oddly enough, each time it was as exhilarating for me as it was the first. It never grew old. I wonder if what I experienced that first time overlooking St. Mary was anything like what Peter and James and John might have experienced as Jesus led them up the mountaintop. 
For it was there that Jesus was revealed in all his glory, transfigured before them, so that his clothes became dazzling white. As a matter of fact, it says that his clothes were so white that no one on earth could have bleached them that white. Now that's pretty white, right? Almost sounds like a detergent commercial. But this doesn't really tell us much at all, does it? I bet that if you were there with the disciples, this description would not even begin to touch their experience. And then beyond Jesus being transfigured before them, there appears with him two Old Testament figures, Moses and Elijah, both known to have had mountaintop epiphanies of their own. Now, as Victoria Lynn Garvey points out in her commentary on this text for the Christian century, the Greek word rendered appears here in Mark is only used for divine manifestations. And then later in the New Testament, when describing Jesus' post-resurrection appearances. So Moses and Elijah don't just show up. They are revealing God's presence in this place. And of course, Peter wants to capture this moment, to hold it tight, to remain in it forever. Build three dwellings, yes, whatever it takes. Stick around, this glory is intoxicating, overwhelming, and yet at the same time, somewhat terrifying, teetering on the edge of reality and divine mystery. God is in the house, or at least on that mountaintop. And then, then comes the cloud and the voice, the voice of God. This is my son, the beloved, Listen to him. Now, does that sound familiar? Where have we heard similar words before? Remember at Jesus' baptism, as the heavens were torn apart and the voice of God spoke to Jesus, You are my Son, the Beloved. In you, I am well pleased. But these words were spoken directly to Jesus. The words from heaven at the transfiguration were spoken directly to the disciples. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. The revelation of who this Jesus really is has broken upon the disciples. They cannot deny it. They have seen it with their own eyes, heard it with their own ears. So what do they want to do? Shout it from the mountaintops, proclaim it to the world. But as soon as the voice spoke, they looked around. And no one was there but Jesus. Gone were Moses and Elijah. Gone was the transfigured Christ. Gone was the clouds. Silenced was the voice. What were they to make of all that they had heard and seen? I am sure that Peter and James and John were comparing notes did you hear what I heard? Did you see what I saw? Much like my passion to share my experience of Glacier National Park, how much more would they want to tell everyone about all that they had experienced? 
Yet as they made their way down the mountain, Jesus orders them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Wait, what? Raised from the dead? Things just went from strange to stranger all ready to share the wonder of all that they had experienced related to the glory of God in Jesus, they are told, no, they are ordered by Jesus not to tell anyone until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. Now, unfortunately, verse 10 of our passage was left out of the lectionary for this Sunday. And it reads, So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. They didn't understand what Jesus was talking about, but they did do exactly what the voice from the cloud had told them. Listen to him. These were not mere words, but rather a call to heed the voice of the Son of God, the Christ, the incarnate one. And we would do well to heed those words of Jesus also. For now the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. From the mountaintops to the lowest valleys, from the east to the west, our voices shall proclaim the good news of God in Jesus Christ. Our lives are to be a living witness to the glory of God. What we say and what we do will be a testament to God's Spirit among us. The gospel is no longer veiled. The messianic secret in Mark's gospel is now revealed. The light has broken through the darkness and has shone in our hearts. Let the light of this transfigured Christ shine in and through you for the sake of the world. These days have weighed heavy upon us, and indeed are heavy even still. Yet we have a God who is willing and able to bear the load that we carry. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, we hear, Come to me. All you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That, my sisters and brothers, is the good news in these trying, trying times. We do not have to carry this load alone. See, so many folks that I speak with today are carrying such heavy burdens. The deaths of family members and friends Illness, job insecurity, lack of income, fear of COVID-19, isolation fatigue, politics, and so many other things. But there is a light, a light that shines in our darkness and scatters our fears, and that light is Jesus. Let us bask in the light of Christ. 
Let it be to you as a beacon of hope. And as the light of God's love shines upon you, may it also shine through you for the sake of the world. Yes, even in these darkened days, the glory of the Lord can and does shine in the minutia and in the majesty of all that God has made. Shine, Jesus. Shine. Amen. the world, 
and to all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark, earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O God. For all who suffer this day, especially Bill, Shirley, George, Lou, Kathy, Boyce, Pat, Rusty, Trudy, and all those we name in our hearts before you. That Christ our healer transforms sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O oh God. God. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during the struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. At this time, I want to take just a moment to say thank you. Thank you for your gifts, your contributions. Thank you for your tithes and your offerings and your time. Thank you for all that you're doing to help meet the needs of our community and the world. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen.
of Christ. Thanks be to God.